Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is M.G. Govia. I'm the Education and Outreach Liaison here at Oki 811. And today's webinar, we're going to be talking about scope of work and exactly what that means when putting in a locate request and how that will help you out to communicate clearly with the locators who are coming out, the member companies who have those underground facilities and go from there. So um, I usually like to remind everybody kind of where we started from um, with OKA11. It all started with the Oklahoma Underground Damage, or excuse me, the Oklahoma Underground Facilities Damage Prevention Act or the OUFTPA. And it's pretty much two parties that are responsible. Um, the first is going to be our members or the owners and operators of underground facilities. And they're to participate with this. And how they do that is by providing us their information. Uh, we need to know where their facilities are located geographically and then what uh, contacts to reach out to when digging is going to take place near those assets. Then the other side of the coin is our excavators. Our excavators, those who are digging, um, need to let us know no more than 10 business days, no less than 48 hours, excluding the date of notification, Saturday, Sundays, and legal holidays before their planned excavation so that the member companies will have time to respond. And so that's the basis of all of it. And if you take anything away from today's webinar, it's that we are focused on the communication of between the member companies and the excavators. The excavator needs to let them know where they're digging and the member company needs to know where their facilities are to avoid um, any damages. So what exactly is scope of work? Why is providing accurate scope of work important when putting in a locate request? Well, let's start with how it works. Just a reminder, an excavator is going to contact OK1. They're going to use their phone. They're going to go online. They're going to use the mobile app. Um, they're going to do that within the time frame. We're going to, our CSR is going to process that excavator's request. And that locate request is going to be generated based on the mapping. And a ticket number is generated and provided to the excavator. A notification will be sent. And that notification is going to be sent to all the member companies in that geographic region. And an average of six members are notified per ticket. Each member company is responding to that request prior to the work to begin date and time. Um, an excavator can give no less than two business days, not kind of the data notification, and no more than 10 business days. So a notification may have um, three, four, seven days out of notification, and that's to give the member companies that amount of time. When they do get out there, they are to mark the approximate location of their underground facilities using paint flags or states, using the APWA uniform color code, and then they're going to communicate with the escrow. This is called positive response. This is where they're going to let them know the status of their locate, if they've been there, if there's any um, conflicts, or if it's all clear, or if they need to request an on-site meeting for while the excavation is taking place. The last step on the excavator side is confirming the location of the underground facilities before bringing in heavy equipment. So first things first, wait the required time. If you gave more than the three business days minimum notice, wait until your work to begin date and time to make sure that the member companies have responded. You do not have a valid ticket until you've reached your work to begin date and time. Your ensure response is received by each member. Um, once you do have um, all response, then you'll be able to start digging test holes to identify and properly protect those underground facilities. If there's a member company that has not responded to you um, through the pro initial process, you can put in a second notice. Let us know and we'll let them know that you are ready to begin your project um, accordingly. Couple things to remember with all locate requests, private lines will not be located. When a member company or facility owner and operator um, turns over that maintenance and service over to the property owner, those are current standard private lines. Obvious private lines are things that member companies don't own like sprinkler systems or propane lines. The other aspect of it is additional electric runs or water service lines that go from the main. So a lot of times those do not get marked to the A11 service. Um, luckily, a lot of private electricians and plumbers have the ability to locate those lines. If not, um, if you're doing this on your own as a property owner and working on your property, I do recommend um, reaching out 
um, to having a third party locate those private lines in addition to the 811 service. OK811 does not locate the lines. We are a notification center. We're going to be the ones who provide notification to the member companies to have the lines located, but we are not the locating company. To put in a locate request, again, you can either use the mobile app or web ticket. That's how 70% of all locate requests are put in right now. Um, benefits are it's available 24-7, 365 for all normal uh, locate requests and their updates. You'll be able to view and update those tickets for the last 30 days submitted by your company. So if you have a coworker that is also responsible for um, putting a locate request or you're turning a project over to a coworker, they can actually see your locate request and take it over if you've submitted it within the last 30 days. Um, Mapping is available when you use the app or on web ticket. And of course, there's no hold times and we all know how good that feels. Um, if you do need to give us a call, maybe you have an overly complicated locate request, or you have to call us because it's an emergency or second or third notice, a demolition notice, damage report ticket, or a wildland fire notification, our office hours are Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then anything outside of business hours, only emergency locate requests would be accepted via phone. Um, but remember, the app or web ticket, you can put in the tickets 24-7, 365. A lot of people ask, how does a ticket get generated? How does it know who to be sent to, right? So let me give an example here. This is an area that we're just using for example. There's I-35 running north and south near Oklahoma City. And a pipeline company calls and lets us and gives us their mapping. And this is called center line data. And they provide this to us. This is where their pipeline is. And Common Ground Alliance or CGA has a best practice of a buffer of 500 feet either side of that center line data. So that thousand foot path right there is a service area for that pipeline company. Then say another company calls and say, hey, we just want 500 feet around this well um, to be our uh, service area. So this well, they give us the GPS coordinates, we throw it in, we put that 500 foot radius around it. And so this is the service area for that well. Another company calls and it's a wind farm. They have plenty of turbines, electric running from one turbine to another. And they say, you know, we're not going to give you all the specific uh, GIS data or mapping data. We're going to just ask that you send us a locate request if there's any activity within these six quarter sections. A quarter section is a half mile by half mile square. So when that takes place, we do not add any buffer. So anytime any digging is going to take place inside those six quarter sections, we'll let that company know as well. So and now an excavator gives us a call. Uh, let's say a neighborhood developer gives us a call and says, hey, we're going to be putting in this new neighborhood. We're going to be clearing roads and all that good stuff. We need to get started on it. Here is our uh, proposed project site. So this is called a dig site polygon to us. Um, a C CSR is actually going to draw onto a map a polygon and that same organization, the CGA or Common Ground Alliance, has a best practice for um, call center polygons, and that is 300 foot buffer on all sides of the dig site. And um, the reason being is literally uh, the telephone game is being played. Um, I see a CSR is talking to somebody, they're deciphering what information they're giving. And so, although they may feel very confident that we're in the right area, if an excavator gives a sixth of a mile, maybe a quarter of a mile, then we can catch that gap just to make sure that all member companies that could potentially be impacted by that excavation will be notified. So those companies are being notified within that 300 foot buffer. So in this example, that pipeline company, the company with the well and that wind farm all had a um, notification sent to them so they can go and locate their lines or let that developer know that they're all clear. So I'm not gonna dive into every field bots that's on a locate request, but I do wanna um, point out the importance of why those questions are there. Um, first of all, we always ask the work, top, work type and what that does for us, excuse me, what that does for us is gives us the 
information right here when you um, drop down a work type that's going to give us the information of what type of work is being done this helps out with locators if someone is doing gardening they may use paint instead of flags if someone's doing uh, different types of work they may uh, mark more frequently depending on what type of work is being done and then we'll need to know how long the work is going to take place and that is going to be a duration of the um, project what this does is that gives the member companies also information um, on how permanent their markings need to be if they're going to be updated uh, constantly through a three-month period or if this is going to be a one-time project or a one-time marking so they uh, look for that information as well the thing about locate requests and i'm going to um, say this a few times over is it's the communication point between the escalator and the member companies and we want to give as much information as we can from the beginning so that there is an additional follow-up phone calls and emails and other back and forth just to get your project located so that you can get your job done so the locate request is very important to begin that communication with as much information as you can provide. Um, there, there is an option here um, after you get done with the um, um, work type and extent. The general questions of explosive white paint and directional boring. White paint, um, I'm gonna get into just a, a little bit more here in just a moment, but if at all possible, please white line or mark your project area this will help out tremendously with that communication again with the locator so that they can see exactly where work's taking place. And let us know if the locators are going to have any trouble getting in due to animals or lock gates or anything like that. And then you can also reference it with any job numbers that you may have. The rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. We'll need the location, the county, and the address if you have it. If you don't have an address, then we'll need um, driving directions, the nearest, closest major intersection, and then provide driver directions to the area. Then the locate instructions. The locate instructions is really what the scope of work is really focused on. Um, we need to know um, when the locator gets there, what's taking place and where it's taking place. For example, if a property owner is putting in a mailbox, they probably do not need their backyard located, right? The scope of work needs to be as accurate as possible to give that locator um, as quick of a trip as possible when they get to that location. And the locate area will also need to um, have reference points and things of that nature, and I'll kind of dive into that. And then after you've taken care of your locate instructions, then there's additional remarks. This is where you can provide mapping if it's available, um, GPS points, um, field, uh, contacts that may not have fit in the other portion of the ticket that may, will be working on the project, um things of that nature special requests like if you insist that no flags are used because there's cattle things of that nature that all those things can be put here in the remarks box so let's talk about the different types of tickets um the most common is a standard or a single ticket job this is when a ticket does not extend um more than one property typically or it doesn't extend past a single block in the city or a single mile in the country if it's a continuous project a couple things to keep in mind and obviously i know i've stressed it a little bit but i want you to um, take it to heart white lining the area where your project will take place this will provide the more markings or excuse me the locator then we'll see where the project is going to take place and then locate an additional 50 feet in all directions from where the white um, markings are um, while it's not in the law it is a best practice like i said earlier it's going to help with that communication tremendously and also you'll make some friends out there in the field and um by doing that your response time will be taken care of if you're not able to white line the area be as specific as possible um if there's a tree in the backyard and even if that tree is just a little far away from where your project's going to take place but it's within a certain radius let them know, throw a ribbon in that tree, say, once you get to the address of this, on this street, in this city, in this town, or in the state, then go to the backyard. You'll see a tree with a pink ribbon or a white ribbon, and please locate a radius of that tree. That limits the scope of what that locator is working on. Anything you can do to help a locator out will help you out um, when you're doing your work. And then the other type of ticket is large projects. And the, 
a large project is when multiple tickets will be needed. And the definition of a large project to us is a large project is a project that cannot be separated into standalone tickets due to the nature of the work. The large areas it covers or the path that it extends for long distances and the path cannot be determined without legal descriptions, GPS coordinates or maps. And then a couple of examples of, of those types of projects are projects that are more than a mile and run in a linear path across country, seismic jobs or wind farms, just for a few examples. So when you are putting in large projects with us, Remember that the jobs should be processed based on what can be started with in a 10 business day period. Now, if you have, there's a project with, I don't know, a 10 mile pipeline, a 10 mile pipeline project, and you know that only one through three miles are going to be worked on in the next 10 business days, I would break it up that way. Um, don't have the locators locate areas where work isn't even going to begin yet. And then, um, that way it'll help out with as a project manager knowing hey i'm only dealing with these three miles right now they're going to be worked on in the next uh, 10 business days i can keep updating those even when i get to miles four through six i can start those tickets update the previous tickets until those laps out and then we'll begin on the next group so that helps out tremendously so keep in mind of that as well if you're not working in the area do you need that locate yet um so um, with your ticket, you will always want to provide field contact information, especially on a large project. Um, there's going to be a lot more communication between the locators and the, and the project um, crews when it's a large project, as opposed to when it's um, a single property or a single standalone ticket. Um, sometimes maps are going to be required. Um, those KMZ files helps out tremendously. Um, what would take place is in that remarks field that we just talked about, you'd say, hey, mapping's available upon request. Those like locators would then give you a call or shoot you an email saying, hey, can you reply with that mapping so that I can use our mapping and, and coordinate um, what's all clear and go from there. Um, it's not always required, but sometimes it will be just depending on the complexity of the project or where it's located. Um, similar to white lining, um, use stakes and marks to show the excavation path. Um, let the locators know exactly where you're going to be working and then give a distance or a radius of your markings to let the locators know um, the extent of your excavation throughout the project. And going back to kind of what I said at the beginning about the being process, what can be done within 10 business days. If a part of the job is complete, say we did the one through three mile project at the beginning and you had all those tickets, and mile one is completely done, but you're still in two and three, go ahead and restart the process with just tickets for miles two and three. Um, this will help out, again, reducing the locator's workload, which improves communication, which means that you're going to be able to work uh, much faster um, with that response time. So um, to wrap this up, there's really five steps for a safer excavation. And that's, first of all, contacting us before doing any digging. You can always call. Or go online you'll be by doing so you'll be reducing the chances of damage uh wait to require time uh work to begin time date and time is always going to be on the ticket it will be at least 48 hours just including the date of notification weekends and holidays and then wait on response make sure that you got gotten response from all the locator or locators and or member companies that are to respond to that ticket and if you do have um utilities that aren't on the locate because you can see pedestals or some other information, give us a call and we'll um, add them to the ticket if they are members of ours. And also, if you don't have um, the ability to find them, um, or excuse me, if you haven't heard from a member company or you haven't the ability to find what's underground, give us a call so we can put in that second notice as well. And then always um, respect the marks. The tolerance zone of that marking is 24 inches other side of the marking. And then once you dig down um, by hand to find that utility, then no heavy equipment should be used within two feet either side of that utility until the, um, the entire facility is exposed, supported and protected for the length of the project. Also, just dig safely. Um, when it comes down to all of it, if you're digging safely and you understand the markings, then you have reduced the chances of damage or um, injury tremendously. Um, if damages should occur, 
do not backfill, do not repair, do not operate the new valves, and you'll always want to contact a facility owner, either directly or through us. One thing I did want to point out is um, there is a handout that's available for you. You can click on that um, handout. And what that is is for larger projects, especially if you are um, a contractor or a company that does a lot of large project work, that handout is really helpful just to kind of give you some tips and um, guidelines on how to put in those. Just a reminder, um, damage prevention as a whole is a collaborative effort. It does take our facility owners and their locators to uh, communicate the location of their underground lines, to uh, do public awareness, to make sure that people understand that they're in there, that area and always call us. Excavators need to understand um, the liability that they're taking on by not calling and contacting OK11 prior to doing any excavation and also putting um, their employees at risk. And we don't want that to happen as well. And then OK811, we are here to facilitate that communication between locators and excavators um, throughout their projects, hopefully to help keep everyone safe. Um, if you have any questions, um, now's the time to um, send them my way. On that interface, if it disappeared from you, there's an orange arrow, you can open it back up and you can submit any questions you have um, to me through that um, chat option and I'll be happy to help out with those. And so far, I'm not seeing anything. Let me look where. Okay. All right. Okay, someone uh, asked that when they do get very specific located uh, instructions, some operators will still mark a very wide area. Um, on the map, and that's going to happen. Um, similar to the CGA best practices of those buffers of 300 to 500 feet, depending on if it's the service area mapping or if it's the uh, CSR's understanding of what the excavator is requesting, um, it is always, always better to overmark than to undermark. If um, they misunderstood your instructions and they marked 20 feet um, too short of where you're actually going to be working and damages do occur then it comes back on them but if they go 20 feet over and nothing happens and nothing happens then everybody's happy so a lot of times um and that and that is kind of the happy medium of this whole point when you are accurate with your scope of work and they still go more than that i mean they'll still be able to do that and yeah, and sorry, there's a follow-up question. So, yes, I understand completely those hundreds of feet that the operator, as in the CSR, is putting on there, it, that can range from a number of things. Um, when that CSR is processing the locate request, if they're in a rural area where um, they're looking at aerial views and they're trying to determine exactly where that oil well is, or if they're um, looking for a particular rooftop or anything like that, when those aerials can be kind of deceiving, or if they're in a new neighborhood where the streets aren't labeled yet or named yet because the mapping data isn't updated yet, we do over map, if you will, we do draw a larger uh, dig site polygons, and that's just to make sure that all bases are covered. And when the, the facility owner and operator gets those, they understand that um, better safe than sorry on all of those, and that's the reason for the um, all clear status. Um, that's going to happen. Um, but again, it always comes back to, I'd rather notify one company too many than one company too little. So um, that's a great question. Um, there's a, another webinar and I'll um, try to send you information on it, on the actual locating process, um, as far as the mapping side of it, so that we can help out with that. Because um, we want the members' companies mapping to be as accurate as possible so they're not over notified. And we need the excavator's information to be as accurate as possible so that the proper companies are notified. But in the middle there, there's just an, an opportunity for any um, misunderstanding to cause damage or injury. So we um, provide a 
policy or procedure to make sure that all companies that could be affected are getting it. So great questions. I get what you're asking. I hope that clears it up a little bit. Um, but if there is additional questions, email me. Uh, my email address is education at oki811.org. And um, I'll be happy to research this further with you. We can do another um, private webinar if your company would like to have that engagement as well. So a couple things to keep in mind coming up on July 7th and 8th, we have our Oklahoma Excavation Safety Expo virtual version. Um, go to our website, okexcavationsafety.com. You have probably received an email by now, um, but we have 10 webinar sessions that we're really proud of. Uh, we took our conference that is normally um, in Norman, and because of everything going on right now, we decided to transition to go virtual. And so we are uh, provided these webinars completely free to register. Um, so you'll register, you can attend, great topics ranging from planning safety into your day to locating underground lines to um, confined spaces, um, building the best you, which is a great um, professional development or personal development um, session as well. Plenty to choose from. Um, I do suggest um, going to our website, okexcavationsafety.com to register for those. By just registering, you'll be entered into a drawing for a $100 gift card to Lowe's. And the webinars that you are able to attend, each attended um, webinar session, um, you'll be entered into a, a door prize for that specific uh, topic. So two chances to win. Um, right off the bat. One, just for registering, let us know you're gonna um, attend. Um, even if you can't attend, you'll get the recording and still be in that, entered in that drawing. And then if you do attend, um, during the webinar topic, you'll uh, have a chance to win a virtual gold prize as well. A lot of cool stuff. Check it out. Okay, excavationsafety.com. And if you haven't checked it out yet, Oklahoma, or excuse me, OK811 has put together an online A11 certification. This is about two hours. You can knock it out all at once. Um, and there are three chapters and then a short review after each chapter with a 25 question test at the end. Once you pass with an 80% or greater, you'll get your certification. Um, the go to register for that is oka11.training. Just punch that into your web browser and it'll take you right to it. It's um, really cool. Um, what I like a lot about this online training is there is a lot of engagement, different um, quizzes, um, animation, stuff like that to help you grasp all the things that are A11. And then if you aren't available um, for one of our webinars or you need to uh, get me in front of a group, there's always education requests. Um, you can do so by just emailing me, education at oka11.org. Let me know if we need to put together a dedicated webinar at a different time than Wednesdays at two, we can do that. Um, we can get a group together and we can go over some different information or as um, things lighten up and get kind of back to normal we can also set up workshops where we let's all have lunch together um, or you can come to my corporate conference room and we can do training that way so plenty of opportunities for you um, just keep in mind there is um, attendance requirements for workshops when there is travel involved and that's there for you as well so with that, I want to say thank you one more time, um, taking time out of your day uh, to learn a little bit more about scope of work. Um, you'll get a copy of this webinar tomorrow. Here in just a few uh, seconds, once I close out of the webinar, you will be asked to fill out a quick survey. Let me know um, how I did. And if you have some future suggestions, we'll be definitely um, taking that feedback. And if you haven't grabbed that handout yet, please do so. Um, that is on your um, interface as well. It's just a quick PDF to help you with any large projects that you may be putting in soon. Thank you so much for your commitment for safe excavation and damage prevention in the state of Oklahoma, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you.